Hey everyone, so this is question 1.4 called palindrome permutation. And for this question, we're given a string and we want to write a function that checks whether that string is a permutation of a palindrome. So those are the two key words there, permutation and palindrome. So palindrome is just a word or a phrase that can be read the same way forwards and backwards. So here, this is an example of a palindrome. It doesn't have to be like a real word, so I just chose some arbitrary letters here. So, apac, to, t, kappa, and you kind of read it backwards the same way. Apac, to, t, kappa. Um, and so that's a permutation. You can read the same way forwards as you can backwards. Or that's a palindrome, sorry. And a permutation is just a rearrangement of those letters. So this here is a permutation of this palindrome, and we just scrambled the letters. It can be scrambled any arbitrary way. We just wanna make sure we're using the same letters, the same number of those letters, and it's the same length. It has to be you know, identical. We're just scrambling the order, and that's a permutation. So we wanna write a function that checks whether that string is not only has like the letters of a palindrome, it's just a permutation of a palindrome. So to do this, there's kind of two different um, cases where this would be true. So if the string being passed has a length that is odd, which in this case it actually has an odd length, as you can kind of see here, um, then for it to be a permutation of a palindrome, there can only be one non-pair, which is this O. There's no, this isn't a pair, there's not another O in here. Um, so if it has an odd length, it can only, and it must have one non-pair. But if it has a even length, which this is an even length string, for it to be true, there are every single character in here has to have a matching pair, which it does. So we could add, say, you know, two O's here, and that's also matching. But if it has any even length, and say, you know, oh, there's two letters here that don't have a matching pair, so then we know that it's not a permutation of a palindrome. So those are kind of two cases where it's true. And so essentially, otherwise, then we just return false. So to implement this algorithm, first what we're gonna do is we want to find out the first kind of thing we're concerned about, which is the length. So we're going to have an int and we're going to have like a num letter. We're going to set that to zero. And so we're going to create a for loop for each letter in our string. We're going to change it because we don't really care about the case to all to lowercase letters. And then we are going to turn it to a character array to make our lives easier. And then for each iteration, we're just going to increment the number of letters. And just like that, we now have, you know, the number of letters in our string. And so next, what we're going to do is we only care about the um, non-white space. So in order for us to check and take advantage of the possibility where it's a phrase, we just disregard any white space in it. You know, for that's kind of typical for palindrome because we're just concerned about the letters match each other forwards as they do backwards. And so we just disregard all white space. So we're actually going to do string dot or no, if letter does not equal a white space, then we care about it. And so we're actually gonna insert our number of letters in here. So we only wanna increment it um, when it's non-white space. And so after this, what we want to do is find out whether, what's the number of non-pairs in here. So which letters have no matching pair, which in this case is O. So we're going to do an int num non pairs, and initially it's zero. And we're also going to use a Boolean direct access array called um, 
let's just do character set, which I normally do, new Boolean, and we actually use this technique for the last three questions, so it's a good thing to learn. And so now what we're going to do is if we have not seen this character before, so if this is false at letter, then what we want to do is we're going to set it to true. So if we haven't seen it before, then we are setting this to true. And then num non pairs plus plus. So we haven't seen it before, so we're setting it to true. And now the number of non pairs is one because it has no matching pair. But when we do encounter a matching pair, so if this is true, you know, like because it was set to true like some other iteration beforehand, then we're actually going to decrement this number of non pairs because, well, we just found a pair. And then we simply set this to false. Because we have two matching pairs. And, you know, in this case, we have four A's. So we really want to set this to false at the end. And so now that we have the number of non pairs and we also have the length or the, the number of letters in our string, we're going to run through these three cases. So let's just copy this so we can keep an eye on it. So for the first case, if the number of letters is odd, so that would be if our mod of two does not equal zero, if it was zero, then we know it's an even length and the number of non pairs is equal to one. So if it's odd and the number of non pairs is one, then we return true. Otherwise, we're going to kind of write the same code here, but for the even case, so if this is equal to zero, so it is in fact odd, then and the number of non pairs is zero, then we also return true. And then otherwise we return false because it didn't match either of those cases. So let's run this here and it's true. And we'll take a look at our test case. And that is in fact true. Let's say if we added a letter Z here, which would be something like this, we run it, it will be false. Let's say if we added another letter O here, like that, then that would be even and no non pairs. Then that should be, actually, I don't think I added it. Uh, yes, I did. And that should be true. And just like that. So I hope this helped and uh, follow for more. Thank you.